Look, the reason why you keep getting cooked by your exams isn't because you haven't studied hard enough. It's because you don't know the exam strategies and the exam tips to score high marks in your AS or A-level exams. The brutal truth is that you can literally spend months leading up to the exam, studying, grinding past papers every single day, but still go into the exam, panic, and fail. My name is Matthew and I'm a student at the University of Hong Kong studying financial technology. And exactly a year ago, I received my A-level results of three A stars and one A. And as of recording this, your A-level results have probably already released. If you're happy with what you got, then that's wonderful. But if you're not happy with what you got, and this is the video that I'm making for you guys, those of you who are not happy with what you got, because I'm going to be sharing you three exam strategies so that you can go into the exam knowing with full confidence that you can actually ace it without panicking and failing like you did previously. I was actually in the same exact situation as you because around two years ago, I did my AS level maths exam early in October, November. I spent months grinding for the exam. I literally spent so many hours doing past papers just to get a pretty mediocre score in the exam and i was so disappointed when i finally got my results and so i know exactly what you feel so point number one that i want to share with you is destroy exam anxiety the reason why you keep getting cooked on the exam is because you're stressed and you panic in the exam room that is not good we want to minimize that as much as possible so the first thing in exam anxiety to reduce exam anxiety is simulating exam conditions. So when I was in year 13, I didn't make the same mistake that I did in year 12. I actually simulated my exam conditions whenever I would do a past paper. That meant timing the past paper, dressing up in my school uniform, sitting in a library where no one can distract me for two hours straight, and bringing only what is required of me into the exam. And because I've practiced with these exam conditions, whenever I went into the exam, I just treated it as just another past paper. Really, it's just another past paper because I've done so many exams in the past. Every single time I was doing a past paper, I would time myself and I would treat it as an actual, actual exam. Like my mind was like, okay, this is an exam, this is an exam, I need to focus, I need to lock in. That's a level of craziness you must have if you want to ace your exams. Because trust me, most people don't simulate the exam conditions well enough. So when they go into the exam, they feel extremely stressed. They start to get panic attacks because they're not used to it. So in psychology, there's this thing called exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is basically a treatment used to treat people that have PTSD. So what they do is they expose this person gradually, slowly, over time to the thing that they're really, really scared of. So for example, let's say I'm really scared of dogs. My psychiatrist would expose me to maybe a tiny little puppy at first, but then gradually increase the dog size until it's like a gigantic golden retriever. So the same with past papers. When you start, yeah, you're gonna feel scared. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna fail. That's completely fine. The, the goal is to fail so that you get more exposure with the past paper and you feel less nervous over time. By the way, all of these exam tips, all of these strategies that I'm about to cover right now is covered so much more in depth in my premium community, A-Star students. I literally go over all the exam secrets, all the exam tips that you need to know to ace your A-level exams. So after doing exposure therapy and assimilating the exam conditions, the second thing that you need to do is master pre-exam revision. Pre-exam revision is that period of time that's maybe like one month or three weeks leading up to that exam, or maybe even two weeks if you're a crammer. But pre-exam revision is so important and is completely different from normal revision. Because normal revision is just you doing past papers and stuff, right? Pre-exam revision is different because you need to be targeting your weaknesses. And this is especially true if you don't have much time and you know you haven't covered a huge part of your syllabus yet. You must 
target your weaknesses because if you don't target your weaknesses they will come back to haunt you on the day of the exam so you must target your weaknesses and the best way that i found to target my weaknesses is not just by doing topical past papers but by doing something called an error booklet so an error booklet is basically a Google document of all of the hard past paper questions that you've done in the past, but you couldn't do. So for example, if I'm going through this maths past paper right now, and I can't do a question after marking it, I'm going to screenshot the question and I'm going to put it into a Google document. The Google document doesn't have to be pretty. It's just a Google document, but you're going to, you're going to put the question in the Google document and do that to Google document periodically from time to time. Why is this so powerful? Because every question that's in the Google document will literally be all of your weaknesses. So it's literally a compilation of all of your past weaknesses that you were not able to solve in the past, but now you're able to do those weaknesses again. And the last thing you need to know to reduce exam anxiety is to sleep. And this means that you should never, 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 never pull an all-nighter before the exam. For the love of God, please do not pull an all-nighter in your next exam. I'm not saying this lightly because I really do believe that sleep is really important and plays an insane, insane amount of, insane amount of role in determining your final exam score. The reason why is because if you don't have enough sleep, you're going to wake up, you're going to go into the exam feeling extremely fatigued and tired. Imagine you're in the exam and there's just like this big ass brain fog that's in your head while you're trying to solve a question. So as you're trying to solve the integral to like LNX, for example, you're getting brain fog. That's not good. You do not want that. By the way, I go over these steps in way more detail in A-star students. I'm just giving you the general overview because it's going to be too long of a video if I were to include all of the specific tips that I use. Point number two, exam skills. So now we're moving on to exam skills. And this is the actionable stuff that you can literally do in your next exam. Right now, it's probably nowhere close to your next exam. But trust me, when you use these tips in your next exam, you will feel a noticeable difference. I guarantee you that for sure. So the first tip that I have for you is a five minute skim. And this is exactly what it sounds like. A five minute skim is, is exactly what it sounds like. Whenever you go into the exam, you sit down, you do the exam paper. The first thing that you want to do is to skim through the exam paper for just five minutes. The reason why you want to do that, my geography team, and funny thing, and there are two reasons why you want to do this. One, it actually forces your subconscious mind to process the future problems in your mind before you even begin to answer them. Credits to my geography teacher for telling me this, but she told me, actually, there was a study done on students where they would skim the exam paper for five minutes and they noticed that their subconscious mind already began working on the problem before they even went up to that question. That's really powerful. And the second reason why this is so powerful is because it allows you to scope the difficulty level of the paper. It's really crazy how some people can go into the exam and just start doing from question one without even looking at like question nine or question 10. To me, that's a recipe for disaster. Imagine you're on a boat and you're sailing in the ocean and you're sailing in the ocean, the big vast ocean, and you don't have a map. You literally don't have a map. So you don't know where the hell you're going. You don't know what the weather is gonna be like. You don't know what the waves, the currents are gonna feel like. And you're just feeling extremely anxious because you don't know where you're going. It's like the exact same thing as what's happening here. You're on a boat, you have no map. You don't know what the hell you're doing. So a five minute skim, it's like being handed a map when you're on the ocean. Like that's, that's godsend. And so another tip that I have for you regarding exam skills is order of increasing difficulty. I used to do exams in a way where I would just open the paper without even skimming the exam and just start doing the question from question number one. That's actually not that good because what I found was that a lot of exams love to trip you up from the very, very first question. 
You think, you think, you really think that the examiners are not trying to trip you up? They have to, because otherwise, everyone would be getting really, really high grades. And an education system like Cambridge or Edexcel cannot function if everyone is getting A's and A stars in their A levels. So they must deliberately make the papers harder from the get-go. So as I'm opening this past paper, first question that I get, sketch the graph of y equals modulus 4x minus 2. The question is literally designed to waste your time. Yeah, sure, it's an easy question, but the question, sketching a graph, is literally designed to waste your time. And so if I were to take this exam again, I would first skip the time-consuming question and go in order of ascending difficulty. So that's why you need to skim the question first, because if you don't skim the questions, you don't know what's easy and you don't know what's difficult. In a past paper, if you've ever noticed, especially for math, but um, this works for other past paper subjects as well, like computer science, business, etc. They usually have like easy to answer questions, like your one markers, two markers, three markers. But then you get to these big ass boss questions that are worth like eight marks, nine marks, 20 marks. You don't want to do those first. So you want to pluck the low hanging fruit first and then move on to the bigger bigger fruit that's like harder to climb and get again all of these tips i have inside a star students i go exactly i go over in so much more detail why you need to be skimming how to allocate time budgets and all the other exam strategies that you need to know it's all inside a star students first link in the description below it has everything you need to ace your a levels so point number three the last point that you need to know to ace your exams without getting cooked is mental mastery. So point number three, mental mastery. Why is mental mastery important? Because all of these tips that I've just shown you is to help you get a better sense of control of yourself and your own thoughts in the exam. But ultimately, if you cannot control your thoughts directly from the first place, then all of this stuff is probably completely useless because your thoughts determine your actions. If you're in the middle of the exam and you think to yourself, Oh, what, what if I'm going to fail? Oh, oh what, what, if, what if I'm going to not get into my dream university? And all of these intrusive thoughts that bother you on the exam will absolutely shatter and kill your grades. What I found from first-hand experience was that students who couldn't control their mental state in the exam did not get good results, did not get their desired results, did not get the A's and A stars that they were aiming for. So you must be able to control your thoughts. You need to become a thought magician. This means conjuring up good thoughts and thinking correctly so that you don't actually like mess up on the exam. So the first tip that I want to give you is called the physio physiological sigh. The physiological sigh is a very, very powerful tool. I learned from this neuroscientist called Andrew Huberman. Basically, he says that whenever you start to feel stressed, when you start to feel anxiety, you want to take a deep breath sneak in another deep breath, and then uh, exhale. That kind of pattern of breathing actually helped me to stay calm and focused in the exam. You will feel so much more relaxed. The reason why the science behind it is actually quite interesting because this physiological sigh actually mimics crying. And the second thing that you need to do is to be in the present. Based on what I've talked about in point number three, you probably already kind of know this, but when you're in the exam, you need to be fully, fully focused doing the paper. You can't be doing the paper and then suddenly thinking about, oh, what, what if I fail this exam? Oh, the, the, the girl that I like is sitting right next to me. Like you can't have those thoughts. You can't have those distracting thoughts at all. Chances are, if you've done tips one and two, exposure therapy, simulating exam conditions, you've done all of these exam tips and everything, you will feel that you're, you're more in control of your thoughts. But I need to drive this point home because if you do not be present in the exam, if you're not present in the present moment, if you're not focused 100%, you cannot get into flow state. And if you don't get into flow state, you're not going to be at your best performance. And the way to be present is to destroy your intrusive thoughts. A lot of the times when you're in the exam, an intrusive thought will suddenly pop into your mind out of bloody nowhere. It could be something ranging from, oh, what if I fail this exam? To, oh, what am I gonna have for dinner? You know, all those thoughts completely 
completely useless. It does not help you in the exam. You got to get rid of these intrusive thoughts. And I go through the exact mechanisms on how you can be more present, destroy your intrusive thoughts, master your mental health, health and all of those things inside this program called A-Star Students. I have literally all of these things inside ASR students explained in much more detail. I even go over my own personal experiences in the past that I can't really cover in a short YouTube video like this. So yeah, to recap, there are three points that you need to use in your next exam. Exam anxiety, exam skills, and mental mastery. And once you apply all of these tips, which I teach inside my community, by the way, once you apply all of these tips in your next exam, I guarantee you, your next exam you will get much higher grades. And this is speaking from direct past experience. So I, I'm not bullshitting when I'm talking about these pieces of advice. Also, if you want extra tips on like productivity, mindset, how to actually study, like the methods that you should use to actually study effectively for these exams, then you might, might want to check out my premium community, A-Star Students. I've talked about this so many times throughout the video, but I genuinely think if you're an A-level student, I genuinely think it's the best tool that you can use to ace your exams, your next exams, whenever they may be. But as always, may God guide us on the right path, and I'll see you in the next video.